Hello everyone, it's Joseph and Ray, back again for another episode of Ask EVGA. This mm-hmm. is episode 12. Yep. I actually know this time. <laughs> I always have to ask you. Um, and uh, today, uh, we're actually also going to be doing a live stream, so you'll see that before this goes live. But um, yeah, the live stream is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be overclocking a 2070 graphics card, so that'll be cool. Yep. Um, and then uh, we've got a bunch of questions, so thanks again to everybody who asks questions in the comments below. And uh, if you do have any questions or comments, be sure to let us know. Um, so to jump right in, uh, first one's for you. It's mm-hmm. Luke Datsman. Okay. And he says, does it make any difference between having two 8 gigabyte RAM sti- sticks versus four four gigabyte RAM sticks if the speeds are the same. Okay, so um, in this question, he doesn't quite specify if we're talking um, performance on a dual channel versus a quad channel platform. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, you're putting this in a Z370 or Z390 board, where it is a dual channel platform exclusively, uh, then no, it doesn't make any difference because the way that the motherboard is wired electrically, um, those two sticks uh, that are going to dominate the same channel on the quad stick configuration configuration are going to show up as a single stick as far as the memory controller on that uh, CPU is concerned. And unlike things like a memory controller in an SSD, where having a different number of chips can uh, kind of change the overall speed. For example, a lot of SSDs, if you get lower capacity SSD, you've got slower write speeds than you do when you go for a higher capacity one. Um, that's not the case with um, RAM on CPUs. It's it's going to be about the same either way. Uh, on a quad channel setup. Uh, X299 as an example. You have a quad channel CPU. Uh, Yes, you will get higher data rate if you have four sticks versus having two because you're running running it in quad channel uh, memory speed and so you will effectively have higher bandwidth. Will that actually lead to any tangible, noticeable difference in day-to-day usage? Probably not. Um, For things like exporting or uh, file decompression, things like that, you may notice a little bit more speed, but uh, usually you have to get into kind of the the data center server type of loads to really notice that quad channel difference. Um, But uh, it's a good question because I feel like a lot of people don't know um, how that works, how how memory works in their system. So basically when it comes to like what memory speed should I go for, you know, how many sticks, I stick to like a minimum number of sticks to meet the number of channels that it has. And uh, I try to go for a speed that's, you know, relatively high but good for the price. Yeah. So basically no. Yeah, basically. It really, no. Functionally, it's not. Gonna functionally, much. especially on a two on a dual channel platform, it's going to be the same. Right. All Great right. question. Yeah, it is a good question. I like that. Going on to the next one. This is from Gordon Clare. He asks, uh, "How do I increase power limited in 1080 Ti? I have used your OC software to mix that. Uh, I know how to. I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding there, but uh, I think we can figure out what he means. Yeah. So um, if you want to raise the power limit on uh, 1080 Ti, um, you can do that through the Precision mm-hmm. software. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can raise the power target, mm-hmm. and you can also raise the uh, the voltage right. limit. Um, that's just done with a slider. Uh, but on some of the 1080 Ti graphics cards, we do have like dual BIOS mm-hmm. cards. Um, that will actually allow you, a lot of times we have a more aggressive profile for like overclocking, mm-hmm. uh, and you can put it on the aggressive, uh, usually the slave BIOS. Uh, and when you switch it to that, you will get a little bit more headroom as far as raising the power target. Right. Um, that is not the same for all cards, though. Usually, like the higher end, like the FTW3 cards, are going to have something like that. Um, as far as um, there being like a, a, an update, because I think that was in reference to the uh, video where we were talking about flashing your graphics card. Sure. I think it was on that card, uh, on that video. Um, as far as like having an actual VBIOS that unlocks more power, um, I don't think we have that for the 10 series cards. No, I don't think we did any because I think they all came with it. Any yeah. any card that had a higher power target, it shipped with it from the factory. Yeah, because the 20 series was um, a little bit limited with the first one that we right. had released, and we upped that limit. So sometimes we have that kind of a unlock that we'll do as far as a firmware update. Uh, But for the 10 series, there's not a particular firmware where you're going to be able to update that. But like I said, if you have a dual BIOS card, switch it over to the slave BIOS position, and you'll get a little more headroom Mm -hmm. there in precision. Yep. Good. Uh, Okay, so the next question, Evil Spartan, Airy, CB, (laughs) 
Um, oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, really, 81C Battlefield 1 in game menu. Uh, exclamation point. He seems right. a little bit upset. Uh, with the 2080XC, that is. Uh, we'll, we'll bleep that and yeah. cover that up. Be okay. careful with language on, on questions, just because if we are going to post them, we, we will have to change them if you put any language in them. Right. Uh, so he says with the 2080XC, that's no good. Uh, the new card is smaller than the 1080 regular plus 20C or more hot. Okay. All wrong. Um, <laughs> it's not any smaller than a 2080 regular. It's actually the exact same size down to like one millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and no, there were no 1080s that ran at 61 Celsius in the menu of, of BF1. Uh, 81 Celsius may be a little bit high for that card, um, especially if it's not under a full load, though under a menu load it can be under full load. It just depends on how the game's devolved. Um, but, you know, check airflow. Uh, 2080 should, in general, run hotter than a 1080. It is a higher-powered chip. It's a much bigger chip, too. Right. Um, so, and that's why the you know, performance of a 2080 is closer to what you would get on a 1080 Ti, in some cases a little bit higher still. Um, and then we'll see some things, driver updates and DLSS that'll make it way higher. Um, but that's sort of on the, on the future. Um, so uh, 81 is well within the specification for the card. So that's definitely not a worrying temperature. But I have used XC and XC Ultras, um, certainly I've seen lower temperatures than that. Um, so you want to, you may want to look at airflow. Again, a lot of people kind of forget that we can build a really awesome cooler, um, but ultimately most coolers that are not blowers are going to push all that heat into your system. So it's really up to how your configuration is on how well that, that heat is going to get out of the system. Um, so if you pull a side panel off a case uh, and you notice you know three, four, or even more Celsius drop, then you know your airflow is, is not sufficient uh, and it should be improved. So I think you can probably get that card down into the 70s uh, without increasing the uh, noise level of the card. And uh, if not, uh, we do have support. You know, reach out to our 24-7 support. Maybe there is something with the card, and uh, we can help you out with uh, any replacement or any troubleshooting. Yeah, and even though that temperature is basically well within spec, um, if you're that concerned about temperatures, I would recommend something like a hybrid card sure. um, or even the Ultra, which has the... You know, thicker, it's thicker red. heat sink. There are and, thicker um, heat sink. Yeah. That does help with cooling quite a bit. Oh yeah. So you'd drop probably five, ten degrees, um, just with the same card, but with that different cooler. Yeah, right I've tested uh, 2080 XC Ultra that we had, and I was doing overclock testing on it, and even just at stock speeds, I couldn't get that thing over like 66 Celsius. It's one of the coolest running cards I think I've ever used. Yeah. And uh, that's not even a three fan. That's one of the dual fans. So, um, again, your temperature is a little bit high, um, but it could very well be configuration related. Right. All right. Next one is from Gamaranda uh, Bamel. Sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, the This is from the... I believe it was the GPU install video. Uh, he says the single two pin you use to make an eight pin, so uh, six plus two. Um, does it matter what side the six pin connects to or will it only connect on one side? Uh, so that actually is a pretty easy question. It, it actually only can connect on one side. So if you try uh, to plug it in the wrong way, uh, the actual cutouts for the pins don't match up with the wrong side. So. Um, Essentially, uh, there's also a lip on the two pin that will hold it underneath the uh, six pin. And um, like I said, there's only one way you can plug it in. So yeah. it's not something to worry about. Like when you're trying to plug it in, you'll notice like oh, it's not going in. Um, just move it over to the other end and you'll see that it goes in just right. fine. Yeah, make sure it's under the lip because I can't tell you how many times I've plugged in the six and the two is sticking up and it's like, whoops, I did that wrong. Uh, yeah. So it does have to be under the lip. The, the two pin is held in place by the six pin because it's the six pin that has the clip on it. Right. So, yep. Uh, this next one. Uh, this one's for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Sturgis Allard. Okay. I like that name. Uh, so the particular graphics card he is installing has a backplate and a, solid, a sizable, solidly connected heat sink and shroud, but wouldn't have been good to demonstrate correct board handling. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Hold on here. Let's see. Let me find a card here. Um, here we go. 
I've got a 780 with no back. This must drive you crazy. <laughs> this just must drive. Like it doesn't matter. You can you can touch uh, the back of a PCB just fine. In fact, um, basically every graphics card is going to have a bunch of thermal pads on it, and these thermal pads can leak a lot of oil from them. They can leach mm -hmm. oil out of them. So you're never going to have anywhere near as much oil on your fingers as the card is going to get from its own thermal pads. Um, so it's perfectly fine. Um, a lot of people get bent out of shape about electrostatics and where you touch it and whatnot. Um, don't touch the connectors directly, you know, the, the PCIe, because it is copper connection and the oil and any moisture can cause it to tarnish a little bit. But even then, the likelihood of being able to ruin, damage anything just by touching it like this, it computer hardware has come a long way. Um, this is not like it was in the 70s where, yeah, things could be really damaged or like replacing a car light bulb where if you touch it with your fingers, it's going to explode. Uh, it's nothing like that. So it's fine. You can touch a card anywhere. Um, basically, all of our cards have solidly built heat sinks, so you can, you know, shake it by the heat sink. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not super concerned about that. And honestly, you shouldn't be either. Yeah, I've actually installed probably hundreds of yeah. graphics cards. Um, Between the two of us, there have been a lot of builds. Yeah, and I've never had an issue with that. Right. Um, it, like he said, with, with pins, like a CPU even, like you right. don't want to touch don't the gold pins. Don't touch CPU sockets. Uh, <laughs> things like that. Like your, your oils can corrode the metals, sure. um, but typically it's not going to do anything to a PCB, which mm -hmm. is made out of silicon. Um, that's not going to make a big difference uh, when touching those components, and it's not like your fingers are going to bridge some connection and short something out. There's not enough electrical conductivity within um, your own skin to actually transfer that kind of uh, damage to a graphics card. Um, but yeah, that that's uh, that's kind of a funny one. <laughs> I like how you grabbed that. I actually, the first time that I built a PC, the first PC I ever built, um, I had anti-static gloves on. I had an anti-static wrist strap, I had an anti-static mat, and um, I was wearing these sort of gogg magnifying goggles while I was installing and everything, and I was freaking out. And actually, that's the same story as I told before, where I opened up the box and there was no CPU in there. Oh, yeah. And I had to go back to the retailer and try and explain myself, and luckily someone had taken right. all of that uh, particular model of CPU out of the boxes, maybe an employee or something, and so um, they ended up giving me another CPU, uh, shipped it to me, but yeah, yeah I, um, I, I went crazy that first time and yeah. it was so unnecessary. I Ever think since that's pretty normal. I think I did too. First build, you know, I had like anti-static on probably on both wrists and they, <laughs> I, they honestly, I think at one point I had two anti-static and I had clipped them together. I didn't clip them to ground. Oh, I literally boy. like cuffs, <laughs> which literally did nothing other than make it so that any static on this hand would go to this hand. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and uh, again, it really didn't matter. Well, and now they have those wireless anti-static wristbands. Did you see Wi that video? Wireless anti-static. Yeah, where he just band. puts on a interesting, <laughs> like a Leiden jar. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So I would say maybe worry about that if you're wearing socks on a shag pile carpet. But uh, other than that, or if you've got Steve's flowing locks, maybe you need to yeah. be concerned. But that's uh, why he probably why he added the anti-static yeah. static wrist strap well, with this the is, mod mat. This is the mod mat, you know. That was the solution to that problem. Yeah, so. Steve's hair was probably shorting a lot of components <laughs> before he got the mod mat. Okay, I think we spent <laughs> enough time on this question. All right. Moving on, uh, Chris Canty asks, I understand that Precision X1 is still in beta, and you're working on the RX RTX uh, 20 series of the cards firstly, uh, but when can we expect EVGA to officially support the GTX series on X1? I love the new interface, less busy and clean. Yep. Yeah, um, I really like the new interface as well. Uh, that's something we're working really hard on implementing. But of course, like you said, we are focused. We, you know, we focused mm -hmm. first on implementing that for 20 series right. cards. Um, but we are working on right. a 10 series release, and that should be coming soon. I'm hoping in the next month or so. Right. Um, don't know for sure because things can change, always change, get pushed yeah. back and change and stuff like that. So. I, I do know that we were pushing for um, GTX support on one of the previous releases. It's certainly it's it's in the pipeline yeah. for um, uh, Precision X1, and the thing that kind of superseded that in importance was adding uh, ICX support because FTW3s are going to be available. Yeah. Um, so ICX support's now on there, so maybe now they can focus on GTX support. I don't know. Yeah, and we've had a lot of products releasing sure. and even um, just uh, 
this morning at at, yep. well, at midnight. Yeah, we had another product release. Twenty seventies. So it's been crazy over here. It's right. been really crazy. So we're working really hard on it. That should be coming, like I said, probably in the next few weeks or month. Mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned for that. All right, and uh, this is the last question from Don D. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you plan on bringing out a motherboard with a similar style to X299 FTWK, maybe in an ATX form factor? I really want to use it in a build. Okay. I'm not, I actually put this question in today because I'm basically asking Don D to kind of clarify what you're asking on that because I'm not 100% sure what you're referring to. Um, I think this was actually, and I could be wrong, I think this was actually in the comment section for the last um, Ask EVJ, so it may not have been directly related to any question. Um, not 100% sure. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't the X299 FTWK ATX, or is it a wider? Did we go a wider format on that? Uh, that's EATX. Oh, it actually. is EATX. Both, okay, both so of maybe the higher that's end what ones on the to. X299 okay. or EATX. Okay, so he, he may be talking is there going to be a uh, premium X299 platform board on a smaller form factor? Uh, I haven't heard anything. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I think for that, we would mostly kind of point you towards the new Micro 2. Um, that would be the best way to get right. something in, a, in an ATX form factor. And quite frankly, you're not losing much on the bottom side unless you plan on running a lot of cards. Um, but these days, because you can't really do more than two-way SLI, there's not many people building three- or four-way builds. Right. And uh, there's less interest in things like external um, or... PCIe uh, cards for audio, things like that. Most anything you would have done with an ATX build on the past, you basically can do with a micro ATX build these days and get yourself an even more compact build with a full featured X299, um, you know, eight, up to 18 core CPU. Yeah, and the X299 uh, Micro 2 is actually the latest motherboard that we released in the X299 series. Yes. Um, and it has a lot of big improvements mm -hmm. off the original micro one. Right. Um, it's a great board. Yeah. So if you're board. looking for something that will fit in your ATX case, the MATX will definitely do that. Yep. So um, that's probably a good option. It doesn't have the LEDs though. So if you're looking particularly for like the RGB, like the FTWK mm -hmm. has, um, that's actually our only motherboard that has right. RGB, you know, features like built into the motherboard. Um, might have stuff like that in the future, but we do tend to focus on like things like the dark board and, and not doing too many frills, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we usually will have RGB headers, so you can always add strips and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, take a, take a close look at that Micro 2. I think you might like it. Yeah, and I've definitely been pushing for them to make more ATX boards because I like the DG7 case, mm -hmm. but um, all of our highest end boards tend to be EATX right. and don't work with that case, right. and I want that compatibility as well. So I definitely have been pushing for that. We'll see what happens in the future. All right. Uh, there you go. That's all the questions for this week. Thank you guys for watching. As ever, leave your questions in the comment section below, and we'll address those in a future episode of Ask EVGA. You have a good one. Bye. Bye.